there he is in second with someone right behind. I've never run a 10 mile race before, so immediately there's one takeaway and one question I have. The takeaway is that you can ring the PB bell because I've got a PB baby, bing bing, which is pretty exciting. But the question is that I, I don't actually know how to approach it, whether I approach it like a 10K or whether I approach it like a half marathon. But if you do follow the channel or if you know anything about me and Mary, I have a cunning plan. So the plan, the plan, the, the working plan anyway, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, is that I'm going to try and run a 10k PB today. I just want to dip under 36 minutes because my PB is 36.01. So we're going to see if I can do that. And then I guess it's just a case of holding on. Uh, what more can I say? Um, I need to go and do a warm up because my hamstrings are feeling tight. My legs are feeling tight today, but just going to see what's in the tank as always. Nothing you know it's not an A race so it doesn't matter and I'm happy that I'm just here <laughs> game time <laughs> things are hurting a better than nothing warm up I guess First kilometer, and I think I've found myself in a working pack. <laughs> we'll see where we go. We've got the bikes ahead. Just got to wait for the hill at six miles, right? Fourteen minutes for four k. Um, all I can say really is. I'm holding on in there. <laughs> We're working together though, which is nice because I don't usually get that, especially not with staggered start stuff. <laughs> in 17.39 and I'm here with Will and Rob and we're just trying to hold it together well I am, I don't know about these two they've got good poker faces but that means for me 10k sub 36 is on and then hold on <laughs> through halfway in 28.16 why can I hear a car, a car back? 28.16 so that's not bad at all still got to climb but then a lot of downhill after that I hope oh gave us the royal wave Sign and the lead bikes have to get off as well. Oh. That is not a nice hill. Oh. The pack broke apart on the hill. I could not hack that. 10k, 10k in 35, 35 there. So that's a new PB. Right, that's the uphill done. Well. 4k flat and downhill now. Oh jeez, that broke me up. Alright, we got just under 3k left. My left hamstring is very tight, but I think I can nurse it to the end and then we'll deal with it afterwards. But yeah, we're doing well definitely. <laughs> First runner just came in, flying, so Ben should be any minute now. Here he is, in second with someone right behind. Go Ben! All the way! Rob helped me all the way 
around the course. Oh really? Yeah. Good lord. That hill is the hill that I cycled to work. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> that hurt. Not much more to say at this point. I mean, I need to really think through how I executed that race and whether it were the right tactics were, whether it was the right tactics, but I feel good. I mean, I finished second in the front six that started, but I have no idea if that actually puts me second in the race or whether there were people that were faster than me further behind. We're gonna take a walk back to the village hall where we registered to, to see what the results were but you know I'm happy I ran a PB a 10k PB within that of 35 35 and I just that was my main aim for the day was to finish with a 10k PB within the race so I'm happy so far Mary just asked what it felt more like a half marathon or a uh, 10k and the answer is I don't know the answer it's really difficult to peg down really because I think the feel in terms of how hard I was running oh just make sure we don't the feel in terms of how hard I was running was probably more 10k um, which makes sense because of course I ran a 10k PB but in terms of the length it feels whilst you're out there it does feel more half marathon -y. I mean it's not over quickly it's much closer to the hour so it's a funny one really um, I don't know if it's kind of a distance that I would like to get to know but uh, it's, a, it's an experience for sure I mean I'd like to know what I would do 10 miles flat because that hill was just monstrous and it just took it out of the legs for the rest of the run and look Mary's walking normally after her ultra marathon as well how are your legs feeling good. yeah like after my first marathon I could not walk yeah and I actually feel I had a bit of a like disrupted night feeling a bit achy but yeah I feel pretty good so I'm happy with that she didn't end up walking like the tin man from Wizard of Oz sadly and I was looking forward to that <laughs> maybe there's always tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> and while I foam roll, just to try and work this hamstring out a little bit, I thought it might be handy to just give you an idea of why I did that race and where I'm going in terms of racing and the season. And I know, obviously, you know that I'm doing a iron distance race or a long distance triathlon. I'm not calling it Ironman because it's not an Ironman brand, but I'm doing that on July the 18th. So we're all systems go for that now. And I want to give you just a little bit more information of how I'm leading up to that in case you're a triathlete, whether you do middle distance, long distance, Olympic, this may be relevant also. What I've got is probably a limited opportunity to race, certainly in the next couple of weeks in terms of running. So. I've done my entire season plan and this is what I tend to do is I, I plan towards my A race which is of course the long distance triathlon so that's July the 18th and I've worked it back how many miles I need to cover each week and the distance of my long runs and we get to a period of about mid-May where I need to start cranking up from a half marathon and beyond but also that half marathon has to switch to a Thursday because I have to introduce brick sessions. And if you're a triathlete, you'll know what I'm talking about. But they are the unpleasant sessions where you have to run off of the back of a bike. Usually quite a long bike when you're training for long distance triathlon. So that has to pivot to a Sunday. And therefore I have to move the half marathons to a Thursday. Which means I can't factor in really, realistically, racing on a Sunday if it's not triathlon. Oh, this is the one. So over the coming weeks and months, what you can expect from the channel is still a lot of running content because Mary will be continuing her running journey. 
as will I to a certain extent, but also you can expect triathlon content or really actually more the mental approach of how to approach anything long distance, the mentality that is required. So it could be like we've dealt with Mary's Ultra over the last few weeks, but also for long distance triathlon. There's a lot of mental work that goes on behind the scenes in these types of events. So I am also obviously gonna focus on that because that is my passion. But for now, we'll focus on good old fashioned car chat. Oh, second day in a row we've forgotten to bring our disposable, reusable cups. That is. Got it. Mm. Anyway, we move on. We don't mean to do this. We're, you know, we're we trying to help them. the world. Yeah. Welcome to. I wonder how that sounded whispered. We'll, we'll see when I edit it. Ten miler is in the bank, and oh, could you pass me my? Trophy. Thanks. Second place overall, which is quite nice. Um, a nice little bonus, really, because as I always say, I never do it for anything like that. I don't do it for the medals, I don't do it for the trophies, but thank you, Mike, and the organizers running and riding for putting the race on and for the nice little bonus. So let's talk race. I mean, this is something that I have never been used to today, something that is very, very new to me, and it was being in a working pack, like, at the front. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really nice. You know, there was um, Rob, myself, and Will. Uh, Will eventually won it, and and Rob was third, and I was second overall. And it, it was a good vibe. They were good people, and yeah, we really pushed each other on. Uh, because That's so nice. I always wonder that. Is it not hard to? Because you said you were kind of talking a bit and stuff, and I'm like, how do you do that? Because I just have to get super focused. Sometimes you do, sometimes you run with people that don't want to talk to you, but these guys, you know, they, they we were talk, at least swapping names. I'm not, I'm not saying we were holding a full conversation, but it was fragmented sentences, but it was nice. And um, so 10 miles is a funny old distance, I would say. Uh, it took me by surprise, I think, in that you can't quite go as hard as you would for a 10k, but you certainly want to go harder than a half marathon. And I'm not used to that pace because obviously I've never run a 10 miler. Mm. But I did get a 10k PB of 35.35. My first 10k was 35.35. There was That's an amazing. absolute grinder of a hill at 10k just as I was trying to get to the 10k. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's, it was a horrible hill. The majority of the race is flat but that hill was there and it really, really takes it all out of you. And then there was a headwind for the last 5K, but it was more downhill. Yeah, I heard the headwind was quite tough. Yeah, but overall, a really positive experience, actually. Um, I won't be running a lot of 10Ks, I can tell you that much. 10Ks? 10 miles. I won't be running a lot of 10 miles, I can tell you that. But I did, I did enjoy it. I think I enjoyed more the experience of running in a pack and you know new people like you met some new people yeah met some new nice people and also you know it's not often you have the lead bikes ahead of you when you're at my level because obviously you know you have levels and levels and levels and yeah but it was nice it's a, local, a nice race. local race yeah it was really good and it was a good vibe and i'm just happy that my i mean my hamstring felt like it was going to go with three kilometers to go and it was really tight and I've worked on it in the car on the way home and I'll just have to manage that in the next few weeks, but... Did you just push through it? Yeah, yeah, it died, it subsided and so I'm thinking actually uh, I'm going to dial back any type of um, pace now for the next few weeks, for the next block and just really focus on my Ironman training. You looked really strong and comfortable at the finish, by the way, just saying. Thank you, that's very kind of you. I felt I felt like I could give it something left. I had something a little bit left, so. Mm. All right, well, you know, we've got a few races coming up. We've still got some races. I'm pivoting into kind of triathlon now that swimming's coming back. Oh. <laughs> Again. Hang on, I have to yawn, otherwise I'm a sociopath. Well, I, I did hide it. I think it's the warmth in the car. Yeah, it is quite warm in here. We're going to get home. So what you've got coming on the channel is some more running races. I'm pivoting to triathlon as well, so I'll be recording my races and my training for triathlon training in the lead up to the Ironman. And then after that, of course, we're moving to Thailand and you'll get all of that while we race the Angkor Wat Half Marathon, the Great Wall of China Marathon. That's our aims. So it's exciting future on the channel. Thanks for being part of it as always. And we'll see you on Wednesday.
Like you didn't talk much this time, did you? Sorry. Um, but I was trying to show. I wanted it to be about you because there's been quite en enough about me, quite frankly. You can never get enough of Mary. Eh? <laughs> See you Wednesday. <laughs>